Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will perform hierarchical clustering of a data using R. So, for this particular demonstration, I have chosen a data set where we have gene expression data of 64 different cancer cell line. There are lots of gene, more than 6000 genes are there. So, what we want to do? We want to cluster this cell line based upon their gene expression features, right? And I want to do it like a hierarchical clustering. I want to create a tree, I want to create a dendrogram, so that that will show the relation between different uh, cell types. So, let us uh, go to R studio and perform that. So, as I said the data set is called uh, NCI 60 data set and uh, it is taken for from ISLR 2 package. So, it has gene expression data for gene of uh, 6830 genes from 64 cancer cell line. So, I have stored it as a CSV file in my machine. Uh, so, I will first read it and then I will look into the data and then I will uh, process the data before I go into for hierarchical clustering. So, let us first read the data using read.csv because that is how I have uh, stored the data. It may take a uh, few seconds because it is a large data file. Uh, let me open it. I have stored it as a g. So, g is the variable where I am storing the data. As I said, it is a bit a uh, large file. So, it may take a slight time delayed for loading. So, what we have? I have a 64 rows here. Each of those are labels for this first column is the label for each of these uh, cell lines. So, CNS, CNS, renal, breast, these are the type of cell line, right? Cancer cell line. So, the uh, fifth one is a breast cancer cell line, whereas your uh, the 22nd one is the ovarian cancer cell line, like that. Whereas, the other column the from the second one to up to the uh, uh, rest of the 6830 columns, those are for each of the genes for which the gene expression data has been measured. Now, the first thing that I have to do, this is the whole data. What I will do? I will separate this label column, right? because this has label for the each of the cell type, label data I will separate out and whereas, I will keep this numeric data for gene expression as a separate part. Right? So, I will create two different variables and store them separately. So, to do that, uh, what I am doing, uh, I want will first get the label data. So, G if you consider is a table or a data frame or a matrix, whatever you imagine it. So, it has indexes, right? row and column. So, I want the first column data and I want all rows. So, the index of row is kept blank. And so, G in the square bracket blank comma 1 that will fetch me all the row data for column 1 and those are the labels, right? And I am assigning that to G dot label. So, that will store the that variable will store me the label. Now, I will fetch the gene expression data. So, that means I want to start from the column 2 and rest of the thing, right? So, I can always write 2 colon and the la final column number, but I will not do that. I have used a, bit, a trick to uh, discard the first column and fetch rest of the uh, columns. What I have done? Within the square bracket, obviously, the, all the rows I want. So, I have left the index for row empty and the index of column I have written minus 1. That will tell R that okay, you discard the column 1 and fetch rest of the columns. So, and then store that to g dot data. So, that will give me the numerical data for gene expression for all these 6830 genes in these 64 cell types. So, I have done that you can uh, see you can uh, check the g dot data it will take some time to open. So, now you do not have label you, uh, you can imagine is a, a data matrix right. So, I have fetched the data which I have to analyze. So, before you move for uh, hierarchical clustering, it is wiser to scale the data. What do I mean by scaling data? By scaling data, see I have all these genes as columns, right? Six, uh, 6830 columns for each of these genes. Within the column, the data have variations. So, what we do? We calculate the mean and the variance and the state and standard deviation for each column and then we transform the data for each column, the raw data of each column in such a way that the mean of each column will become 0. So, that is called centering of the data and the standard deviation for each column will also become 1. So, I will get a centered scaled data, right? 
So, it is a good practice to do that, it may not be required always, but if your data different uh, gene has different uh, dispersion level right and uh, the mean may be quite large, uh, the variation between means of different gene expression is very large, then your uh, uh, clustering algorithm may give some uh, aberration. So, that is why it is always better to scale the data center and scale. So, what I will do? I will use the scale function. So, I will use that g dot data which stored the numerical data for gene expression for all these uh, genes uh, to scale and store that at g dot sc. So, now I have the scale data. So, I will perform clustering not on the raw data, but on the scale data. So, before I move for move for clustering, I have to calculate the distance, pairwise distance between each of these cells, right. Each of these cells is observation. So, for each pair of the cell type, we have to calculate the pairwise distance. So, how do I do? I use the distance function to calculate the pairwise distance between these 64 cell types. So, I use the scale data g dot sc and the method of distance. If you remember, there are many distance met metrics. We have learned few of them. So, here I am using the Euclidean. So, I am telling okay, you calculate the distance between the these cell types using the Euclidean distance as a metric. So, I am writing method equal to Euclidean and that distance data is stored in g dot dist. So, now I am ready. I have scale data from that data I have cal calculated the distance pairwise distance. So, now I will perform hierarchical clustering. So, to perform hierarchical clustering, I will use H class, the default H class function of R. Now, obviously, the distance measure here will be the uh, arguments for this function, not the original uh, scale data. So, g dot dist will be used as a input, as an argument for this function. And if you remember, there are broadly three methods of calculating distance between clusters. One is called complete linkage, one is called single linkage, another one is the average one, right. So, what I am doing here in method, I am specifying that use average linkage as a method of calculating distance between clusters. So, I am using H class with average linkage and I will store the output of this clustering to the variable HC. I have performed, HC has all the information but I will not dig into that, I will go for plotting the dendrogram, right. If you remember, uh, the hierarchical clustering will eventually give me a tree showing the relation between uh, different clusters, right. So, I will plot the dendrogram. To plot the dendrogram, I will use the plot function, it is quite versatile and powerful. So, the input will have the, or the argument, the first argument will be HC, that is the output coming from my H cluster function. And what I will do, I have to label the leaves, right. If you remember, a tree will have leaves. So, each of these leaves should be labeled. What will be the label? Label will be the name of the cell line, right. And I have stored that information in g dot lab. I created that a uh, few, few lines back, right. So, I will use that information, that label information present in my original data set as labels for these leaves. I will put. Uh, on the top, I will write name of the dendrogram is average linkage. I do not want any horizontal axis, vertical axis label, right. I do not want the subject as also, I do not want to print the subject. So, I keep that those empty. This is interesting, I put hang equal to minus 1. So, in that case, what will happen in dendrogram, all the leaves will be on the same line, same horizontal line. So, I you execute this plot function. Let me zoom it, make it full screen. So, this is my dendrogram or tree of hierarchical clustering for my this gene expression data set and we have done average linkage to calculate the distance between two clusters. Now, let us look into it. On the left hand side, I have seen uh, a K56 uh, to uh, K562 B, K562 A, these two are leukemia cell line, they form one clusters, right. And then that cluster fuse with another leukemia cell line. And you can see all these are on the left hand side are all leukemia cell line and they are all clustered fused together, right. And that is what we want, we expect that, is not it. Similarly, here if you see you have the two breast cancer cell line, 
they have formed a cluster whereas here as we have a stretch of long stretch of renal cancer cell line which are forming cluster and those clusters are again fusing to give bigger clusters right so that seems that this uh, cl hierarchical clustering using average linkage has worked pretty well for this particular uh, data set and now within this uh, i can see that the gene expression data i can conclude that gene expression data can actually it uh, segregate different cell types right based upon the gene expression data i could segregate these different cell types in different clusters so th that was also the purpose of performing the gene expression analysis now i have performed this using average linkage what about complete linkage and single single linkage so i'll perform the same thing using uh, complete linkage and in uh, also single linkage if you remember in complete linkage what we are doing in contrast to average linkage we were not taking the uh, distance between the average distance between two cluster as a distance between clusters right what we will do we will calculate the pairwise distance between two cluster and i will take the maximum one whereas in the single linkage method we will take the minimum pairwise distance right so in i uh, will perform first the complete linkage uh, algorithm so i will not separately perform it while plotting i am performing it so i am calling the plot function and the first input is i will perform the h cluster hierarchical clustering using h cluster where the data will be the distance data and the method will be complete right so this part will be executed before plotting the data and rest of the thing remain same except the title of the plot i have changed to complete linkage so again i'll zoom make it full screen okay uh, here also you can see nicely for example this colon cancer cell all are stuck together uh, melanoma are all stick together leukemia is again cluster on the right hand side obviously this complete linkage dendrogram is quite different from what we got in the average linkage and that is quite expected but broadly both complete linkage and single single linkage has given me separation or clustering of cell type based upon the gene expression same cell types are in same cluster or they are right so uh, that way both complete linkage and average linkage is working for us in this particular data set now let us start from the same thing with uh, single linkage again i will not perform the clustering separately while plotting i will do that let me see now we have some trouble okay in some case for example melanoma they are close they are uh, in a tight cluster but you can see lots of mix up has happened and what we have achieved we got a dendrogram which has something called trailing you know thing we are get a long chain of the cluster getting fused with one another that's quite uh, you know that's quite aberration of clustering and uh, we discussed this problem while discussing hierarchical clustering in our previous lecture and that is why single linkage is usually not the preferred choice of distance measure while performing hierarchical clustering just like uh, we have uh, seen the good dendrogram we have got a very balanced dendrogram when we are using average uh, linkage and complete linkage for our data set most of the time people try to use uh, average linkage or complete linkage to create a more balanced dendrogram and in this case also i will go for either the average uh, linkage or for the complete linkage so that's uh, brings me has to the end of this lecture what we have seen in this lecture is that we have performed hierarchical clustering using h class the default function that we have and we have created the dendrogram in this lecture we have shown that all these three method you can use you can use direct you know all these three three linkages uh, average complete and single but as i said it is better to use average linkage or complete linkage to get a better dendrogram you can extract the data for each of this cluster from from this also uh, from this uh, hierarchical clustering also i will not go into them they will be uh, similar to how we has worked earlier uh, for data extra extraction so that's all for uh, this lecture Thank you for learning with me today.